Today is Vlogadan day 19. So Ramadan is going on very fast. We reached day 19, and you know, I at least I didn't even feel it going. It was, it was very fast. <laughs> uh, that's pretty scary. Um, so it's early in the morning. It's uh, it's almost 12 o'clock, but. Um, uh, the the sky is clear there's uh, the sun is shining everywhere it's a lovely day and well today we are going to deep clean the house a little bit and we're going to prepare for iftar as well today is also Juma, so we are going to prepare for Juma too and um, show you how our day is going to go with our Juma activities and you know, the iftar and how we're going to manage all the day and you know that stuff. So, uh, we're also having our Easter break. So, uh, we didn't go to school. Today's Friday. We aren't, we aren't going to school because of the Easter break. It's six days long. So, yesterday uh, it started. So, it was Thursday. Today we're not going as well. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday and Tuesday. Uh, you know, all those days we're not going to school. So, pretty happy and well we're going to show you the, the uh, let's start the vlog so guys we're going to the masjid to pray Jumwa. and well uh, in the meantime you may go and watch our uh, sunnah segment today's friday so we'll be reviving the sunnahs that the prophet wasallam used to do on friday the first sunnah we'll be arriving is to take a bath, to do ghusl. The second one is to wear your best clothes, pick your best clothes to wear on that day. The third sunnah is to brush your teeth with miswak. If you don't have miswak, nowadays you can also revive the sunnah by brushing your teeth normally with a normal toothbrush and toothpaste. Fourth sunnah is to apply kohol or kajal, as uh, however you may say it. The fifth sunnah is to send durood on the Prophet wasalam, and uh, do your daily dhikr. The next sunnah is to go to the masjid. We should also apply ether or perfume. And we should listen to the khutbah attentively and perform our uh, Juma prayer. In our today's Ramadan recipe, we're going to make chicken tikka thighs. First of all, we're going to make cuts in the chicken and we're going to marinate the chicken with yogurt, vinegar, salt, pepper, red chili powder, Kashmiri chili powder, turmeric, coriander powder, cumin powder and tikka masala. Add ginger and garlic paste, mustard paste, and oil as well. Mix it well and leave it to marinate for at least 2-3 to three hours. If you do it overnight, it's way better. Our chicken is marinated, now we're going to steam it and then we're going to air fry it. You can also uh, fry it with regular oil as well. Today we're breaking our fast at 6.47 p.m. Uh, and we're going to have uh, some onion pakore and fruits. We're having plum and apples. And then after praying salah, we're going to have dinner, our chicken tikka with some fries. We also received this cake from our close Pakistani family friend. So we're going to have it for iftar as well. Guys, today is day 19 and we are here to open our calendar. Today we have um, a, a crop bar. These are white chocolate bars. Uh, these are like the nugeton we got at uh, the beginning of Ramadan, but just in white um, icing. These are really good. I love them. <laughs> and well, 
uh, these are like wafers uh, with um, a vanilla filling and chocolate covering this is white chocolate and vanilla flavored the others were dark and well, you know dark chocolate um, we really like this I could already feel something and well so first of all we will read the picture of the day and then we will read the picture we will guess the picture the picture of the day is our lord make of us Muslims down to your world and of our company of us down to your world and show us our lives and accept our environment you are the often returned so um, uh, the picture is a fish in a basket and, and I do not know the, I do not know the story so let's see what it's like. we know the story. But before seeing the story, I think I have an idea of what this may be. So this reminds me of the story of a prophet. I think it's Musa. So as far as I remember, um, he had to travel to visit another prophet. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him to carry a fish with him. So he did so. And it was something like this. When the fish... Uh, disappears, goes out of the tank, the, the basket in, in, which it, in, in which it is, uh, you will meet the prophet there. So he took a nap. When he woke up, the fish was in there. I think it was something like this. I'm not sure. Um, and then, well, he met the person who he, he had to meet. And, well, they did some things. Uh, he showed him... Uh, uh, some miracles to say so uh, as far as i remember he uh, killed a child um the, uh, there were reasons for this um he also uh, uh did, a, uh, did a hole in the um in the ship in the ship and uh, there was something uh about a wall that he also did i, I and that's all he did and then well Musa Islam questioned all of that and at the end of the day uh, everything was explained by the other prophet and well he, he learned some things this picture shows us a fish in a basket that is from the story of Musa alayhi salam meeting with Hizar alayhi salam the story starts with Musa alayhi salam was traveling in search searching for a righteous man to learn more from his because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted him knowledge and enlightened him about matters that no one knew. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Musa alayhi salam that he would find Kizar alayhi salam at the junction of the two seas that, and that he should take a cook fish with him to be a sign and guide him to where the man is. A boy was traveling with him. During the journey, they lost the fish. When Musa salam asked the boy, he re replied that he lost the fish when they rested by the rock. So in Surah Al-Kahf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and remember, when Moses said to his young assistant, I will never give up until I reach junction of the two seas and even if I travel for ages. But when they finally reached the point where the seas met, they forgot their salty fish and they and made its way to into the sea, slipping away wonderlessly. When they had passed further, he said to his assistant, Bring us our meal. We have certainly been exhausted by today's journey. He replied, Do you remember when we rested by the rock? That is when I forgot the fish. None made me forget about the to mention this except Satan. 
and the fish made its way into the sea miraculously. Moses responded, "That is exactly why we were looking for." So they returned, retracing their footsteps. There they found a servant of ours, to whom we had granted mercy from us and enlightened with knowledge of our own. Musa alayhi salam said to him. May I follow you, provided that you teach me some of the right guidance that you have been taught. He said, "You certainly cannot be patient enough with me. And how can you be patient with that that is beyond your realm of knowledge?" Musa alayhi salam assured him, "You will find me." Patient, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala willing, and I will not disobey any of your orders. He responded, "Then, if you follow me, do not question me about anything until I myself clarify it for you." So they set out, but after they had boarded a ship, the man made a hole in it. Musa alayhi salam protested, "Have you done this to drown its people? You have certainly done a terrible thing." He replied, "Did I, did I not say that you cannot be, you cannot have patience with me?" Musa pleaded, "Excuse me for forgetting, and do not be hard on me." So they proceeded until they came across a boy, and the man killed him. Moses protested, "Have you killed an innocent soul who killed no one? You have certainly done a horrible thing." He answered, "Did I not tell you that you cannot have patience with me?" Moses replied, "If I ever question you about anything after this." Then I not then do not keep me in your company, for by then I would have given you enough of an excuse. So they moved on until they came to the people of a town. They asked them for food, but the people refused to give them hospitality. They they there they found a wall. Ready to collapse, so the man set set it right. Moses Moses protested, "If you wanted, you could have demand, demanded a fee for this." He replied, "This is parting of our ways. I will explain to you, but you could not be bear patiently." As for the ship, it belonged to some poor people working at sea, and I intended to damage it. For there was a tyrant king ahead of them who seized very good ship by force, and as a And as for the boy, his parents were true believers, and we feared that he would pressure them into the the defiance and disbelief. So we hope that their Lord would give them another and more virtuous and caring in His place. And as for the wall, it belonged to two orphan boys in the city, and under the wall, the the wall it was a treasure that belonged belonged to them, and their father had been a righteous man. So your Lord willed that these children would should come of age and retrieve their treasure as a mercy from your Lord. I did not do it all on my own. This is the explanation of what you could not bear patiently. So we learn from the story. We no one knows the wisdom behind Allah's will. A hole in the ship is to protect them from a. Bigger danger. 
The story of Hizar and Musa alayhi salam will learn to always trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and have faith in Him. No matter what happens to us, we should know that it happened for the best because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants what is best for us. So today is Friday and the picture is of Surah Al-Kahaf. We should always read this surah in in the Fridays. So that was all for today. Don't forget to give a like, subscribe, ring the bell, comment below, and share with your friends and family. Bye! Bye.